Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. It's me, your old friend, Andrew Fantasia, or maybe your new friend, Andrew Fantasia. You might be tuning in for the very first time. If so, welcome. If not, welcome back. It's time for another Marvel United Deep Dive. Before we get started, please be sure to like and subscribe and do all the stuff that YouTubers are always telling you to do, and I apologize for being annoying, but apparently we have to do that. It helps. Also, I'm going to be double annoying because I am going to remind you that if you're a fantasy fan or you know somebody who loves fantasy, don't buy them a Tolkien book. Don't buy them a Brandon Sanderson book. I have nothing against Tolkien or Brandon Sanderson. They're both great writers. I have enjoyed their work countless times. However, they are all going to be okay. The estate of J.R.R. Tolkien is fine. The future estate of Brandon Sanderson is fine. However, an up-and-coming fantasy author like myself isn't fine yet, but you can help them become fine by checking out We Were Wizards, which is my fantasy novel saga that I have been writing for many years, and the first two books in that saga are out now on Amazon, only on Amazon for now. Hopefully that'll change one day. The purple one comes first, followed by this gray one here. We Were Wizards is a whole fun time, and I hope uh, you have as much fun reading it as I did writing it. If you don't like hardcover, you can get paperbacks and you can get ebooks as well. Okay, it's now time to take an extra deep dive because we are talking about the very first Kickstarter promo box. Marvel United Season 1 came with a delicious, gigantic batch of goodies. Too many to be contained in mere expansions, so we got the stretch goal box, which when it comes to Kickstarters, that's, you know, part of the, the joy is getting a giant box of toys to add to the mix. And this box is no exception. It is giant and it is full of toys. However, not as full of toys as it would be if you were to buy it. Quick disclaimer, I organize my boxes in a very specific Andrew way, which can sometimes be weird and frightening. So you will notice, if you already own this box, that there are characters missing from it. I will walk through everything so everybody knows you have seen in the past videos uh, that I take other characters, such as Okoye, and I put her in the Black Panther box so that she can be with Black Panther characters. So there are cards missing from this box, but the miniatures will still be in there because that's where they fit. And I will walk through everything so anybody who does not own this box and is thinking of buying it, you'll know exactly what you're getting. So have no fear. I got your back. Let's take a look at that box right now and see everything that's inside. Here it is, and what a beautiful work of art we have here. I love the art on every Marvel United box, but the stretch goal boxes in particular are magic. They really are something special. Uh, and this is a chunky box. This is a big chunky box and it's the smallest of the three stretch goal boxes so you're in for a treat if you're somebody who enjoys the quantity aspect of marvel united i'm gonna very carefully flip it over because it's heavy and at the back here there's not a lot of writing actually there's very little blurb text at all there's just a little gallery of everybody who comes inside the box so you can pause that if you want to take a look but we will go into more detail uh, and another reminder that there are several characters who come in this box uh, I've removed their cards and put them in other boxes that you've seen in some of the other deep dives uh, and I will go over who they are when we get to their minis but their cards are not in here just so you know just so we're all on the same page so as soon as you take it out you got this cardboard house here where the minis live so we'll move that aside for now we'll look at the minis a little bit later for now in here we've got some dashboards and lots and lots of cards we'll take a look at the cards first right here we'll start with this well i have everything organized alphabetically so it's much easier to you know find who i'm looking for so we'll just flip it over and here we go starting with the hero who comes first alphabetically even after three seasons he's still the first on the list and that's adam warlock a uh, very overpowered character and he was a all-in bonus i think i believe he was the all-in bonus for season one so i could be wrong somebody please let me know if i'm wrong but if you're to buy this on the aftermarket right now uh this box I think there's a chance you might end up with a box that does not come with Adam Warlock. Again, that might be me totally mistaken, but I have a feeling that's the case because he was a, a special add-on character. 
Uh, so he's in here. He's got lots of wilds. And then we go to America Chavez. There we go. Lots of America Chavez. Great character. I can't wait for her to come back in the MCU. Still, the fact that we've only seen her in one movie is outrageous. Black Cat is next. Another great character from Spider-Man lore. We can get Black Cat's cards in here. She's one who doesn't come up often when I do my random things. So I haven't used her often. Blade is next. I know there's a lot of Blade fans out there fighting vampires. I've always been so-so about Blade because he's so far removed from everything. Like you never see Blade fighting Doctor Doom or something. It's always just him fighting random vampires. So he feels like he's removed from the Marvel world. So Blade's uh, movies don't excite me as much because it's like, well, I'm not going to see him fight anybody except the generic vampire that I've never heard of. But I know he has a lot of fans. So I hope his movie gets made for their sake. And then we have the next crop of cards here including Daredevil. You'll notice all the characters from the Defenders are in this box. Big character, Mr. Daredevil. Here he is here. And then followed by Doctor Strange, who I believe you can get Doctor Strange as a promo character if you order the Spider-Man box on Amazon. It's weird how that works, but that is apparently a thing. Oh, well, there's Doctor Strange's cards. He is very, very powerful in this game. Followed by Ghost Rider, but this is the Robbie Reyes Ghost Rider. It's not the OG Ghost Rider. Still looks cool, though. Still got a lot of neat stuff going on here. Uh, followed by Elektra, Daredevil's paramour, an assassin. She's like the Raphael of the Marvel world because she wears red and she uses size. And then Falcon, who is now Captain America. But this is before, when he's good old Falcon. Good stuff. Great solid character. And let's grab this next well of cards. Oh, boy. Picking up cards is fun, but difficult, especially when they're sleeved and they get really slippery. There's Hawkeye, who I know a lot of people were bummed because he's not in his classic Hawkeye costume. I think it's fine. He's in the MCU costume. It's all right. But a uh, classic Hawkeye might be fun, too. But just please give us newer characters before you give us reskins. Uh, Howard the Duck. Very, very fun addition. I'm so glad he's in here. And I've won more than my fair share of... Uh, Games using his Neutron Disintegrator. He's pretty good, man. You don't mess with Howard. I love that his symbol is just his little hat. And then there's Iron Fist, the next member of the Defenders. Cool, cool looking character. He's, I love his silhouette. is so striking. And following Iron Fist is his friend Jessica Jones, another Defender. And she's great also. And they managed to convey in the art how exciting she is, even though it's there's no costume. It's just like a lady with a jacket and jeans, but they still made her look cool in all of these. So kudos to the artist for that. You don't need a costume to be an awesome superhero. And Luke Cage, speaking of which, another guy with no costume. He's just in a yellow t-shirt. But man, that yellow t-shirt speaks volumes. It is synonymous with Luke Cage. And I like this look for him better than the 70s look with the high collar. I think this is cool. And he's a great defender as well. And that rounds out all the defenders. Then we got Mockingbird, who I'll admit I never heard of until I got this game. Marvel United introduced me to Mockingbird, so thanks for that. Uh, I think she may have been in a trading card or two from my youth, but she made very little impression, so I guess I forgot she existed. But yeah, that's cool. And in the movies, she's played by Linda Cardellini, who I got a big old crush on, so I'm happy to have her there. Second last hero cluster here. Here is Moon Knight. Very, very cool looking character. Another one that we need to see pop up in another show or movie because it's been too long. Miss Marvel, her cards are beautiful. Look at that gorgeous color work. This is the comic version of Miss Marvel who is stretchy. Uh, she can stretch a lot. I know very little else about her. Nick Fury, here are his cards here. Good old-fashioned um, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. doing what he does best, striking poses and punching and wearing an eye patch. More beautiful cards. There's Nova. And this is the Oh, I forget his name. He's not Richard Ryder. He's a younger, newer Nova, uh, and I don't know what his name is. But that's him. For those who like that version of Nova, here we go. Followed by Punisher, who's got a big bazooka. I'm not a huge Punisher fan. I'm not a non-fan. I don't dislike him. I just think in a world full of awesome, colorful characters like Cyclopses and Spider-Men and whatnot... Just a guy with guns just seems kind of boring to me. Quicksilver, on the other hand. Now that's a costume. Look at that. that. That is so cool. And his cards are great. He's very, very speedy. They nailed the Quicksilver of it all. All right, last chunk of hero cards. 
Scarlet Witch. This deck is so fun. I can't wait to get my hands on the version of her in the Witching Hour. Even though she's just a villain, she's not a hero. Man, is that going to come out or what? Come on, Witching Hour. Throw us a bone here. And then next is Shang-Chi. Strange color choice, the, the gray. I never would have seen that coming. But he does have gray on his costume here. So I'm assuming this is a comic book look. But yeah, I like Shang-Chi. Very cool to have him in here. Coming up after Shang-Chi, though, is one of the two characters I was most excited to get. Let me rephrase that. One of the two heroes I was most excited to get in this box. And that is my girl She-Hulk, Jennifer Walters. Just the thought, when I ordered this game at first, I was like, I'm going to be able to get a game where I can play as She-Hulk? That made me so excited. It's such a rare thing. To have that coming in this box, like, that just made the anticipation so much greater. And her cards are beautiful. They're the perfect color of green and the mix of the, the pinkish purple. I love it. And there's one more hero in this chunk of cards where I'm like, I was really excited to get them as a playable hero. Uh, it wasn't Squirrel Girl, but it's close because I really like Squirrel Girl too. And she has some powerful abilities as well. This common sense ability. If the number of your special effect cards in the storyline is greater than the villain's current health, the heroes win the game. <laughs> there's, there's no other hero with a sort of game-breaking mechanism like that, I think, in all of Marvel United. I haven't played all of Season 3's heroes yet, so maybe I'm totally wrong. But isn't that cool? And she just looks awesome. Like, look at that dynamic squirrel. Okay, here we go. The second hero that had me most excited about this box is Vision. And I mean, look at that. that is, he's so colorful. His cards are magnificent. He almost looks like the wild symbol. <laughs> it's just, it was so heartening and so delightful to know that a box was coming on my doorstep with a playable Vision in it. That just, that really struck a, a chord with me. And then last but not least is War Machine. And he's great. He's got a lot of cool moves. I think uh, his deck is better stacked than Iron Man's deck, uh, which makes sense. It's probably a slightly more advanced suit than the one Tony wears. There we go. That's everybody. Bada bing, bada boom. Now it's villain time. And you'll see the biggest discrepancy uh, here because I've taken out a lot of villains to make room in the box. So what we have here is, and this I have for some reason in reverse alphabetical order, but there's Modoc. These are Modoc's cards. <laughs> we got a chameleon and a spot artwork before we ever saw them two seasons later. And Living Laser, who we still haven't seen again. Let's get Living Laser in on the action. But there's Modoc's deck. Uh, first time I played against him, he beat me in two moves <laughs> because it was just the luck of the draw. Uh, he's, he's annoying, but fun. And then here... The character in the box I was most excited for, period. My favorite comic book character of all time, the Kingpin, who has a very cool mechanism that's unique to him with the uh, the plan tokens, which makes him difficult, but in a very random way. It's like you can strategize against him up to a certain point, but it's the luck of the draw, and if he just gets a bunch of these cards in a row, he's winning. So... I'm sure there's a lot of strategy players out there who hate Kingpin's deck because it's so luck-based. But for me, I'm happy because anything Kingpin makes me smile. So I don't care. I will gladly lose to Kingpin over and over again. Then here we have Dormammu's deck. Dormammu has no minions, uh, no henchmen, which is strange. Uh, but there he is. He's not oversized. Uh, actually, we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to his mini because uh, I think it's just kind of a curious, fun thing. And there's Dormammu. Very, very cool. And Bullseye who always seemed like a henchman to me and not, you know, somebody deserving of his own thing, of his own villain thing. But I stand corrected. It, I want as many villains as possible. So yeah, why not? Let's have Bullseye. And then finally, Baron Zemo, who's got all these henchmen, which are really, really fun. And then his master plan deck there. So that is that. That is the little well of villain cards in here and their dashboards are all here. Baron Zemo, Bullseye, Dormammu, who's got a lovely tracker, my best friend Kingpin, and Modok. And these guys are slightly more complex. Let's see. Um, so Kingpin, Dormammu, and Modok have some more complex setup rules. These guys are a lot simpler. So they're already starting to up the ante of how difficult they can make some of the villains. All right. Let's take a look at the miniatures now. Oh, and first of all, I just want to call to attention this lovely 
artwork on the side here. I think all the Marvel United boxes have this, but because this has the most characters, it is the most prominent. And man, isn't that nice? Isn't that just like going above and beyond? I love that. Okay, so inside of this box, you will find two plastic trays full of miniature goodness. And the box tells you, very helpfully, gives you these silhouettes of what should be on the top tray. And if you flip it over, it tells you what is on the bottom tray. So if you're ever like, ah, I took out a bunch and now I don't remember where they go, boom, they got you covered. Thank you, Simon. Very kind of you. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go in order of my least to best favorite mini because that's there's a lot of minis here. So we're just gonna go top to bottom here and just talk about it uh, and what is in store. But I will mention ones that I really, really love. Like this, for example, Squirrel Girl. Squirrel Girl is just beautiful. Like I love how thick the tail is on her. I love the little squirrel on the ground. It's just a magnificent rendering of this character. Let's see if I can shed some more light on the situation. There we go. Yeah, that's magnificent. They did a great job with Squirrel Girl. Next up is Dr. Stephen Strange with his uh, MCU uh, sparkle fingers. <laughs> I think that's the proper term for it too. And you can even see the eye of Agamotto on his, around his neck. Uh, plus he's got his lovely billowing cloak. Great Doctor Strange. These things really sell it. They really sell the pose of Doctor Strange and make him stand out. Very easy to pick him out of this crowd of minis. And next here we have Vision, who, now this looks like a DC United mini, right? This looks like the more advanced minis we see in later seasons with the big cape, with him floating. He's, he's, uh, Coming, phasing through a brick wall. That's the word I'm searching for, phasing. He's got his solar gem on top of his head and all the little detail, the little vision-y details on his uh, suit, which must be a nightmare for painters. That's why I'll leave painting to professionals and keep these blue and red. Thank you very much. And here is the love of his life, the Scarlet Witch. Excellent pose. She's got her corset and her jacket and her, her spooky fingers, <laughs> which uh, I think that's the the best way to describe them, and her crown. Yeah, wonderful job on her. And again, these are very MCU uh, looks for these characters, but I don't mind. I really don't mind, as long as they give us a good look for a character. Uh, one could argue that Hawkeye did not get the best look, but I'm glad they didn't go with weird looking versions of them. I want them to look as classic as possible. That's just a fantastic pose. That's one of the best poses, I think, in season one of Quicksilver just skidding to a halt after a long, very fast run. How cool is that? I think the, the Flash one in DC is going to look similar, except he's got the lightning behind him. Can't wait to put them side by side. There he is, Ralph Boner himself. Now here is the first you will see who we did not see her cards in here because I moved her cards to another box, and that's Okoye, uh, Captain of the Dora Milaje, because I put her cards in the Wakanda box, the Black Panther box, because that just makes the most sense. I want to keep those characters together. Her spear got a little bent. Uh, it gets in the way when you're sliding this tray back in here. Her spear can get in the way and catch on this, so I would advise you to be careful. Uh, that's why it's got a little bit of a bend to it, but that's not a problem. It doesn't bother me. Uh, and a great, great mold on her running with that spear. Very nice. And this is followed up by Mr. Hawkeye with his sideways bow and his uh, non-classic look, excuse me, his, his MCU look with his sunglasses didn't make too many people happy, but I am okay with it. And something about him holding it sideways, it makes the bow look smaller. It makes it look like a little medieval crossbow. I always picture Hawkeye with like a big old Legolas bow, but maybe that's more Green Arrow's speed. Here's War Machine. He looks fantastic. Th those guns are a great way to tell him apart from Iron Man really quickly. Mm-hmm. War Machine. Nice. And then, man, talk about great-looking miniatures. One of the best in this box, Falcon. That's just... I love what he's doing with his hand. It's like he's he's just yelling at somebody that he's battling. He's like, hey, get back here. I got wings. You can't run. Uh, and the wings themselves are so detailed. They went above and beyond on Falcon. And it shows he's almost the centerpiece of this whole tray. Next is Nicholas J. Fury, who's striking a cool pose with his big trench coat and his eye patch, and he's standing on whatever the hell that is. 
And he's just like, ooh, don't mess with me, I'm a tough guy. Great looking miniature as well. And that's followed by Miss Marvel, who really stands out. Just a very unique, wild, busy looking miniature with stuff going all around. She's punching a fist triumphantly. She's standing on a, a fallen traffic light, which I think is so awesome. And her scarf, which is sort of uh, her defining feature. It's like her version of Doctor Strange's cape. Her scarf is just flowing all over the place, as it should be. And now, let's go down into the villains. This is Corvus Glaive. Okay, he is the fourth child of Thanos. You did not see his cards in here, because we saw his cards in the Infinity Gauntlet box video. That's where I keep them. And he looks magnificent. I love the pointy cloak he's wearing. I love the big spear that he's carrying sideways. It's just very, very cool. This alone, if you only saw this, it would make you think you were playing an Arcadia Quest game or something, and like some goblin with a spear popped out of the shadows. So I love that they have that look, that medieval monster look that juxtaposes against the more modern superhero stuff. Very cool. Speaking of modern, here's Modoc. Uh, not oversized. Uh, I wonder if today they would have made him a bit bigger. But he's just, he's still unique. He's blasting off the ground with his... His little joystick. What a weird character, man. So much fun. And uh, he's basically like a giant computer egg with a face in it. He, he's so odd, but so delightful. He is a character the Iron Man cartoons made me familiar with, so I'm glad to see him in here. But not as glad as I am to see my favorite comic book character ever. There he is. Big Willie Fisk. As you all know, I always like to save the best for last when I'm opening stuff. So when I got this all together with X-Men and everything, this was the last box I opened. And this was the last figure I took out and admired. I really savored it. Uh, he's got a great base. He's just standing on like a marble tile floor with a carpet. Because Kingpin is always surrounded by the comforts, the finer things. He appreciates them. Um, even though his gains are all very ill-gotten. Can't wait to see him go up against Spider-Man in the movies. But he has to wear the white suit. Spider-Man's got to wear the red and blue suit. None of this red and black Tony Stark suit stuff. It's got to look classic. Uh, and here is Bullseye. And he's throwing little knives. He's got this grin on his face like, hee hee hee, I'm a jerk. Because Bullseye is kind of a jerk. He's a psycho. Cool pose. Really captures the, like, throwing. Throwing is probably hard to capture in a mold. But these guys are pros. They know how to do that. Here is the second villain that I have taken out of the box, cards at least, and that's Rhino. This is him here. This is a more modern Rhino, where his suit looks like armor. The classic Rhino, the Nino, it just looks like a guy encased in rock. And I think I prefer the classic, but I like this too. This is fine. Just don't give me Paul Giamatti in a mech. <laughs> that's all I ask. His cards are in the Sinister Six box, but he comes in this box. So that's him being angry. And in the cartoon, he was from Jersey. That's how we talked. I like this guy a lot. He's very hard too. Very, very difficult villain. And here is Baron Zemo, a not so difficult villain. I think I've beaten him every time I face him, but he's cool. And I love that he's got like a full on European broadsword. And it's classic Zemo with the fur and the purple face. And I love that his pose, they made it heroic. This looks like a heroic pose. But that's because that's how Zemo sees himself, right? Thought that was very neat. Here's another villain, Kang, the Conqueror. Or at least just Kang, as the cards say. I have taken his cards out of here and put them in Guardians of the Galaxy Remix. That's where you saw them. And he's standing on some crystals, some rocks, um, which is odd. Kind of an odd figure, but there he is. And I think there was something special about the Kang figure, too, that if I remember right... Um, Kang was not in every version of these boxes. There was something about him that, for some reason, he was left out. And I don't know the story behind that, but a quick Google search or one of you guys who knows more than me could tell me exactly why that was. But that's him with his classic Lego head. Kang's head always reminded me of a Lego character. And it's very sad to me that we're not going to see him uh, get his dues in the Avengers films because I was really looking forward to them fighting a whole bunch of Kangs. And I still hope in my heart of hearts that in the future of Marvel United, whether that's a season four or whether it's character packs or whatever, we get 
the Scarlet Centurion version of Kang and the Rama Tut, especially Rama Tut version of Kang, because I want to fight them too. And here is Carnage, the Screaming Mad Symbiote Carnage, whose cards I put in the Spider-Man box. Uh, he looks adequately red and adequately frightening, with tendrils slipping all out of him. My best friend Tiago, this is his favorite Spider-Man villain. We spent many, many an hour in our youth uh, trying to beat him in the Maximum Carnage game on Sega Genesis. And we got to it. We beat him like, at least once, if not twice, but it took us literally years because uh, that game is not easy. But here he is again. Very difficult to paint. You can see the streaks that would be black. That's him, though. <laughs> Scary. And then right next to him is the slightly more lovable symbiote, Venom. Great pose on Venom. He's standing on like a door that he just busted down. And there he is with his tongue. He has tendrils too, but not as many. Carnage is more tentacly. Venom's all about the tongue. And he looks really cool here. Hello, Eddie. We're going to eat some brains. I love this guy. He's so much fun. And this is classic Eddie Brock Venom, who is the only Venom that I really subscribe to. The whole Mac Gargan becomes Venom thing, uh, no thank you. <laughs> so this is good old fashioned vanilla Venom. Uh, he's also in the Spider-Man box, by the way. That's why you didn't see his cards here. And you didn't see Hela's cards either because she is in the Tales of Asgard box where she belongs. But this miniature is Hela cool. And I am the first person in history who has made that joke, I promise. Um, look at that, look at that crown. That's a crown. What are we doing in our lives where our sovereigns don't wear crowns like this. Where did we go wrong as a society? Her cape is doing that too. It's got curling up at the edges there. Beautiful. And she's just striding with the confidence of someone who is going to be the queen of Asgard. I love it. But yeah, I put her in the Thor box because she's the Thor villain. And I need to clear space out of this box. And then the last villain here, Dormammu. And I will admit, if there's ever a point where they reissue characters or just do them a little differently. I would love a different Dormammu figure with either fire effects, because they didn't do any fire effects in season one, or make him oversized, because they didn't do that in season one either. And oftentimes Dormammu is bigger than life. Sometimes he shrinks down to human size, but most of the time you see him, he's huge. So the fact that this is the Dormammu figure we end up with is a little bit underwhelming. But I love playing against him. He's a very fun villain to play against. That looks like a lion's mane. Sometimes it looks like I'm fighting Lion-O from Thundercats. So I would love a different version of the Dormammu figurine. But I can always paint it, I guess. Even though it'll probably look bad. I'm sure that's what people have done. But I barely have any complaints about Marvel United. And that's not even a complaint. That's just a preference. I still love it. All right, now we'll go on to tray number two. It's all heroes. And we're gonna start from the top here with the immortal Iron Fist doing a great martial arts pose there. And he's got his bandana, which is a crucial part of his silhouette. So I think they nailed Iron Fist. They also nailed Elektra because those Psy needed to be there. And I love how she's holding one vertically and one horizontally. That's a very cool Elektra. And her hair looks great too. Lots of detail in her hair. They really captured the sight of her standing on a rooftop with the wind blowing around her. And next to her is her on again, off again paramour, the devil of the dare. He's a little bit bigger because he's standing on uh, a gargoyle. He's got his classic DDs. He's got his batons. He's got his horns. Here he is. There's Mr. Daredevil. Uh, I'm still, as I do this, I'm still trying to figure out which of these I, I think is the best miniature. Uh, and I'll have an answer by the time we're done. There's Luke Cage. Simple, classic Luke Cage. Yellow t-shirt. Curling those biceps. Ready to fight. To protect his friends. Superb. And there is his on again, off again paramour. Miss Jessica Jones. She is very cool too. Again, they managed to make just a lady in jeans and a jacket. Running around looking dynamic and interesting. No easy task, but the miniature designers over at Simon, they know their stuff. Here is Punisher, and he's got his classic chest skull and his kind of classic bazooka. I always pictured him with like a rifle. Uh, but the bazooka feels more like the animated series Punisher, which I appreciate. And then down here we have Mockingbird. She's got a bow staff, which makes me happy. And that is just a great 
simple figure two. There, it actually looks like she's fighting with it. Cool. And next to Mockingbird is a hero who has been removed from this box card-wise, and that is Spider-Woman. I, I have taken Spider-Woman's cards and put them in the Spider-Man box. But I love that. She's standing on uh, one of the suspension cables of a bridge, and she's uh, using spooky fingers just like Scarlet Witch. But that is a great figure. After her is our friend Shung chi with his nunchucks. And he has great hair. And he's just uh, he's ready to take on somebody. He's got that martial arts pose of, ha, come on. Oh, and I didn't even notice how, how well the nunchucks tuck under his arm like that. You want these silhouettes to be perfect so that the minis are easily recognizable around the table. And the nunchucks really help. They really add to that. Next is Spider-Man 2099, who I have also added to the Spider-Man box. So his cards were not in here. We didn't see them. He's standing on a roof's edge, I think. And this is the white suit Spider-Man 2099, which I am not a fan of. Uh, for me, it's a dark blue or nothing, baby. But this is cool. This is fine. I'm all right with this. Since this is the days before purple minis were a thing, we have here our hero version of Venom, uh, which frankly is funny because this looks a lot more of a villainous pose than this. This looks slightly more heroic. Uh, but there you go. You got two Venoms and... You can make them kiss. Look, I always thought Venom would be better suited reissued as a purple figure. He's black, and the purple, I think, would look closer to the black than either red or blue. And then plus, it makes him easily discernible from Carnage, who should be red. So maybe one day they'll reissue Venom and make him purple. I don't know. But for now, we have this handsome fella, whose cards are in the Spider-Man box, along with his villain deck. And here is Black Cat, whose cards we did keep in here, also standing on a roof. She looks very, very neat. She's crouched almost the way a cat would be crouched. So that's fun. After her is America Chavez. Uh, and at first you'd think, oh, this is just a fine miniature. It's just her posing. But America Chavez creates star portals. And if you turn her around and look, what is she rocketing out of? A star portal. It's clever. It's this great detail that makes the miniature work, and it's hidden. It doesn't call attention to itself. I think that's magnificent. Now bring her back into the movies, you cowards. All right, who's next? She-Hulk. I'm going to be honest, even though this was a character I was looking forward to the most, not my favorite figure. It's literally just her looking tough like a Hulk. Definitely a figure that would benefit from being painted, but I'm not going to risk that. I don't want to ruin the minis, because this box is expensive to replace. But there is She-Hulk, looking fine. Definitely a contender for one of the best miniatures in here, Moon Knight, standing on such a, an elaborate uh, rooftop corner. And then on top of that, he's got his crescents, he's got his little logo, his hood looks great, his belt and cape look great. This is an outstanding... Even looking at him from the back, you know right away that's Moon Knight. No question. Terrific figure. After him comes Blade, and another great figure, because you've got his telltale katana, his shades, his flat top haircut, and his billowing black trench coat. And I think there's a stake in his hand, isn't he? Yeah, there's a stake. I've never noticed that before. Isn't that cool? Blade's got a stake. He's going on a stake out. Ghost Rider, the slightly less popular version with a big old chain and a hook, and that is an excellent addition to this character is this giant chain that's just swirling around him. No fire effects, but that's okay. Ghost Rider is so cool, you don't need fire effects to make him stand out. He's already just one of the coolest looking superheroes there are. And he's got that thing on his chest that differentiates him from Johnny Blaze. I don't know what you call it. It's just like that pattern on his jacket. And here is our all-in promo character, Mr. Adam Warlock. And this might be a contender for the best one. He's got this swirling vortex of power. He's raised up. He's got the huge staff in his hand. The great pose. Uh, very reminiscent of the kind of miniatures that we see in future seasons. Particularly DC Superheroes United. That's Adam Warlock, who may or may not be in your copy of this box, depending on the situation. There is Nova, who's blasting off into the wild blue yonder, or black yonder as it were, because he's usually in space with the, the Nova crest on him there. Very, very cool. And then here is Nebula, 
whose cards I put in the Guardians of the Galaxy box where they belong. She looks great too. She's got those like retractable baton swords that she uses. This is 1 million percent the Karen Gillan version of Nebula, which is fine with me. And I think she's a contender for people want to see a villain version of her the same way we ended up getting a hero version of Loki. Because she does play for the bad team quite often. And then here's Mantis, who I also put in the Guardians box to free up space in here because there was plenty of space in that one with her great little antennae to differentiate her. She's so much fun. Joining them as their fellow Guardian, whose cards are also absent from here, Drax the Destroyer. And the aggression, the pure aggression in this miniature really sells it. Really sells the fact that, yep, this is Drax, baby. After Drax, we've got Howard the Duck, who is slightly smaller than everybody, as he should be. And he's looking as heroic as possible. And I think that's all you need. You don't need to have a crazy pose because he's already a crazy character. So cool. And finally, last miniature in the box, Yondu. Now, Yondu's cards have also been put in the Guardian's box, but what a miniature. The mohawk is perfect. The coat is perfect. He's opening the coat to let the arrow out, and the arrow is careening out with the little red zigzag line to show its trajectory. I mean, come on. That's just... They nailed it. In terms of my favorite miniatures, it might be Adam Warlock, it might be Yondu. And Yondu, by the way, is also a uh, exclusive character where you, you only got him if you ordered a certain part of Season 1, I think. I, I, I wasn't around during the Season 1 campaign. I only came into the thing at Season 2. So people who were around since the beginning, let me know what I'm missing. But Yondu was a bonus for getting something. Uh, I just can't remember what the hell it is. But there he is. So you may also end up with a box that is Sans Yandu. Now, as we put this away, I just wanted to show you, uh, if you're thinking of getting this box, which you absolutely should, to just be careful when you're closing it up. Because look at Okoye's spear. It brushes the tip of the box, so you want to make sure it's lifted a tiny bit so that she has room to go in. And you can actually see the point on the box that's been poked by her spear one or two times, All right? So there, it's nestled snugly in, and we can close that up. And now, finally, as I put everything away, I can add to the box because there are things I have put in here that do not belong in here. And it's not much, it's literally just three hero decks from season two, and you'll understand why I did it. Uh, even though if you're a comic book fan, you're probably screaming at me and saying, wrong! I have put two hero decks in this well. I have put Captain Britain and Cloak. Uh, they come in the mutant promos because they're mutants, I guess. I guess that's part of their lore. But I figure Cloak is a street-level hero in New York, and all of those street-level heroes in New York are in here, so I took him out of that box to save space. Captain Britain, I can't remember why I moved him here. I had a reason, but I just needed to get one more hero out of that box, and Captain Britain fit the bill. Uh, and also Dagger, who goes hand in hand with Cloak. I had to put her in here because, yeah, she goes hand in hand with Cloak. That's the reason. So Dagger goes in the bottom there, just because it's alphabetical. And then we pop the rest of those heroes on top of her. And it all fits nice and snug. And that is the first promo box for Marvel United, but not the last. Now, there's a lot of stuff in there, so let's go back and take a look at how many points of worthiness you're getting out of this work of art. Man, that was a deep dive, wasn't it? Because that is a deep box, and they're only going to get deeper from here. So points-wise, um, it's actually really simple to tally this one, because there's no locations or extra modes or fiddly bits like that. It's literally just characters, and that's easy-peasy. Ready? This box contains 46 total miniatures. Uh, if you get the box that I have, some boxes are missing Adam Warlock, but if we're talking about just the box that I have, 46 miniatures come within. 35 of those miniatures are heroes, so that's 35 points right there. And 11 of them are villains. Villains are worth 2 points, so that is an extra 22 points. 22 plus 35 plus 46 equals... 103. 103 solid points. And that sounds like a big number. 
already. It is leagues ahead of all the other boxes we've talked about so far. But get ready to get excited because as big as that number is, remember, this is the smallest stretch goal box. So prepare your mind and body for a whole lot more math, but it's the best, most fun kind of math, I promise, because we are literally quantifying fun. That is the amount of bang you will get for your buck if you pick up this box, which admittedly is not cheap on the secondary market whatsoever. So it is my hope for all the people out there who want to get into this game but haven't yet, that some kind of season four or something happens that will allow people to pick these up again in a fresh new uh, Kickstarter or GameFound campaign, whatever they choose to do. So before we go, now that we have reached the end of season one of Marvel United, let's take a quick look back at all of the Season 1 boxes and how many points we gave them. Starting with the lowest of the low, which was the Rise of the Black Panther expansion. Great expansion, but if you tally everything up, it's only worth 13 points. Ahead of that, three expansions are tied. Tales of Asgard, Enter the Spider-Verse, and Guardians of the Galaxy Remix all had a total of 15 points of worthiness. I incorrectly put Tales of Asgard lower last time I recapped everything because math is hard sometimes and I think what I did was I forgot about Beta Ray Bill. Um, I sometimes forget he's in that box, but yeah, that, the Asgard box should be worth 15 points. After that is the Sinister Six box, which is worth 20 points, a nice little jump up from 15. And the Infinity Gauntlet box was also worth 20, but we edged it up to 21 because of the gauntlet and the stones, which are set dressing at the end of the day, but damn, are they ever pretty. So it garnered an extra point. Uh, hop and a skip a jump away from 21 is the number 30, and that's how many points we gave to the core box. As classic as they come, Vanilla Marvel United is worth 30 solid points. And way, way, way ahead of that at 103 points is today's stretch gold box. That's the amount of worthiness you're looking at in Season 1. Which, all in all, ain't too shabby. But, as you will see, Season 1 crawled, so Seasons 2 and 3 could run. Next week, we are going to trade in our Stark Armor for some delicious yellow spandex because we are going to slide out of Season 1 directly into... The season of the mutants and it's gonna be fun baby i hope to see you there as we get into marvel united x-men and all of its expansions on a fresh new wave of deep dives and we're gonna get into that next time here on digital charcuterie so until that happens my friends thank you so much for tuning in as we continue to make the wait for dc superheroes united a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter see you next time